Why hello there friends, it's Emma here, the Bookish Princess. Today, the day I'm uploading this video is December 16th, and that is the birthday of the one and only Jane Austen. So I thought today would be the perfect opportunity to continue a series I started earlier this year of Jane Austen character maps. So we're mapping out all of Jane Austen's novels. Today, we're going to work on persuasion. I've already done character maps of Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Lady Susan, and Sense and Sensibility. I'm kind of a huge Jane Austen fan. I've talked about her on my channel a lot. I have a whole playlist of my Austen videos, so if you're interested, I'll link that up above. A quick spoiler warning, we are going to be getting deep into the plot and all of the connections between the characters, so if you haven't read the book yet and you don't want the details spoiled, you won't want to watch this video. Persuasion actually opens with a character map. Sir Walter Elliot of Kellynch Hall in Somersetshire is reading through the baronetage, so this is the famous Debrett's that it chronicles the family trees of England's aristocracy. So it's very appropriate that we're drawing out some family trees today. The heroine of Persuasion is Sir Walter's daughter, Anne Elliot. Anne's mother, Lady Elizabeth Elliot, died when she was a teenager, and her absence is still felt many years later. Anne was very close with her mother, and her two sisters are not really substitutes. Her elder sister is Elizabeth, and her younger sister is Mary. Sir Walter and Lady Elliot had three daughters and no sons, so the estate Kellynch Hall will not be passing to any of the daughters. It will be going to a distant cousin, William Walter Elliot. More on him to come. While Lady Elliot was alive, there was moderation at Kellynch Hall, and she reigned in her husband's expensive habits, but after she died, Sir Walter spent as much as he wanted and so when the novel opens Sir Walter is trying to figure out how to pay all of his debts because they have mounted up considerably. Mr. Shepherd, his lawyer, is called in to consult. Now Mr. Shepherd has a daughter named Mrs. Clay. She is a widow. Her husband Mr. Clay died some years previously. I always think it's interesting that in the book Mrs. Clay has two children but we never see anything of them and Mrs. Clay herself must not see them very often because she spends most of her time at Kellynch Hall kind of fawning over Sir Walter and Elizabeth. The other friend who Sir Walter calls in to advise him is Lady Russell. She was a close friend of Lady Elliot, and now she is very close to Anne. She's really a mother figure to Anne. Sir Walter is advised to let Kellynch Hall, so he's going to move away and uh, get a tenant who will bring in some rent as they're discussing possible tenants, the name Wentworth comes up. Seven years previously, there was a curate at the nearby village of Monkford named Mr. Wentworth, but our hero is actually his brother, Captain Frederick Wentworth. While Mr. Wentworth was a curate, his brother Frederick was just a poor sailor and he came and stayed at Monkford. He met Anne, they fell in love, they got engaged, only to have her family put the kibosh on it. A poor sailor was not good enough for Sir Walter's pride, and even Lady Russell advises Anne, who was quite young at the time, that it's not a prudent match and that she should call off the engagement. Anne does call off the engagement. Frederick Wentworth leaves the area. They don't see each other again for many years until Anne hears that name Wentworth mentioned in connection with a possible tenant. So we already know Captain Wentworth's brother, the curate. He also has a sister named Sophie. Her married name is Mrs. Croft. She's married to Admiral Croft, and it is Admiral Croft who ends up becoming the tenant and renting Kellynch Hall. And guess who he invites to stay? His brother-in-law, Captain Frederick Wentworth. So how the mighty have fallen once Captain Wentworth was deemed not good enough to marry Sir Walter's daughter. And now Kellynch Hall essentially becomes his home while he's staying there with Admiral Croft and Mrs. Croft. Elizabeth and Sir Walter go to live at Bath. They take a house in Camden Place. They bring with them Mrs. Clay, who has become close buddies with Elizabeth. Anne suspects that Mrs. Clay's ultimate goal is Sir Walter, that she wants to marry him. Now Anne does not accompany them to Bath. She is perfectly content to stay in the countryside. She goes to stay with her sister Mary, who lives not too far away from Kellynch Hall. Mary is married to Charles Musgrove. Interesting fact, Charles first 
asked Anne to marry him, but she said no, and then he asked Mary, and Mary said yes. So now they are uh, married. They have two children, a little Charles and little Walter. They're fairly young, but we do see them in the story a bit. Charles is the oldest son of Upper Cross Hall. Mr. Musgrove and Mrs. Musgrove, his parents are still alive, and they live at the estate Upper Cross Hall. Charles and Mary live at Upper Cross Cottage in the same village. The families are very close. Charles has many siblings, and the two we get to know the most are Henrietta and Louisa. They are the young ladies of the household. Not far from Upper Cross, the Musgroves have a cousin named Charles Hayter. One day he will inherit his family's estate of Winthrop. The Haters are slightly lower on the social scale than the Musgroves, but the Musgroves are very friendly with them. It's only Mary, because of her aristocratic background, who doesn't want to associate with them, so she does not like the fact that Henrietta is very fond of Charles Hayter, and it seems like they might be a match. As we mentioned, Kellynch Hall is not too far from Upper Cross, so the families do meet and sees Captain Wentworth at once again. Mary and Charles are hoping either Henrietta or Louisa will end up falling for and marrying Captain Wentworth. We hear that Captain Wentworth actually has a connection to the Upper Cross family. One of their sons, Richard, who has now passed away, but he was sent to sea and he served under Captain Wentworth uh, for a little while. So in the end, it seems like Louisa is really the one who falls for Captain Wentworth and it seems like he likes her quite a bit too. Anne still has feelings for Captain Wentworth but it's obvious he really wants nothing more to do with Anne so it's very painful for her to have to watch this growing relationship. Persuasion has quite a lot of movement in it. We've already moved from Kellynch Hall to Upper Cross. Now the action moves from Upper Cross to Lyme. Captain Wentworth has some close friends who live at Lyme, Captain Harville and his wife, Mrs. Harville. Also, Captain Bennick. Captain Wentworth served with both Captain Harville and Captain Bennick. He, Charles, Mary, Anne, Henrietta, Louisa, all of them go to visit um, his friends at Lyme. Captain Bennick is quite close with the Harvilles and is actually staying with them. We learn that he used to be engaged to Captain Harville's sister, Fanny Harville, and she has died some years previously. So Captain Bennick, when we first meet him, is still quite heartbroken over that. But he seems to warm up and some of the party suggest that he has a crush on Anne. The excursion to Lyme ends abruptly and alarmingly with an accident. Louisa falls on the cob and knocks herself out, and it's not clear when she'll wake up, if she wakes up. Since she can't be moved, the Harvilles offer to take her in, and some of the Musgroves go to Lyme um, to help nurse her. Anne's visit to Upper Cross was already approaching its end, so she heads to Bath to join her father and sister at Camden Place. And there are a few new characters awaiting us at Bath. We finally meet Mr. Elliot, the heir of Kellynch Hall. Anne actually caught a glimpse of him at Lyme. For many years, Mr. Elliot had not been on good terms with Sir Walter. Sir Walter was hoping that he would marry Elizabeth, but instead he went off and married a rich woman from a lowly background. His first wife has passed away, and now in Bath, he goes to visit Sir Walter and Elizabeth and wants to be on good terms with them again. He introduces them to his friends, Colonel Wallace, and his wife, Mrs. Wallace, who is expecting a baby. Some other relations of the Elliots who arrive are Lady Dalrymple and her daughter, Miss Carteret, and they are even higher up in the aristocracy than Sir Walter. So Sir Walter and Elizabeth are very anxious to be on good terms with them, to be seen out and about with them. Anne has a friend in Bath who does not live in a lofty situation. Her old school friend, Mrs. Smith, lives in Westgate Building which is not an affluent part of town and Sir Walter doesn't even really want her to go visit Miss Smith but Anne ignores him. Mrs. Smith is a widow. Her husband Mr. Smith passed away with many debts so Mrs. Smith now lives in reduced circumstances and she has poor health but she does have a friend Nurse Rook who helps her out and who she likes to gossip with. Now, while Anne has been in Bath, new romances have been in agitation back in Lyme. Louisa is recovering from her hall in the house of the Harvilles, and she ends up helping Captain Bennick, who you'll remember was staying there, get over his heartache. Louisa and Captain Bennick fall in love and get engaged. Anne is very surprised to learn this because she thought Captain Wentworth and Louisa were an item. 
So we're approaching the end of the novel and all of the main characters converge on Both, which after all was one of the major places to see and be seen at that time. Mrs. Musgrove comes with Henrietta, Charles, Mary, and Captain Harville. Admiral Croft and Mrs. Croft come. Uh, Admiral Croft has gout, so they're hoping uh, the waters of Both will help him with that. And Captain Wentworth also arrives. It seems like Captain Wentworth's heart has at last relented and he's interested in Anne again, but Mr. Elliot is in the way. It's been pretty clear for a while that he is very interested in Anne and Lady Russell very much approves the match. As you may have already gathered, Anne has a much better head on her shoulders than the rest of her family. And all this time, there's just been a certain something about Mr. Elliot she doesn't trust. The truth is revealed to her from an unexpected source, her friend Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith knows all about Mr. Elliot's past because her husband, when he was alive, was very close friends with Mr. Elliot. In fact, it was Mr. Elliot who encouraged Mr. Smith to spend more than he should have and good into debt. Mr. Elliot is revealed to have a black heart and character. The only reason he married his first wife to get her money, he was not kind to her. He did make fun of Sir Walter and he wanted nothing to do with the Kellynch family. But now things have changed. Mrs. Smith has the dirt on Mr. Elliot's present because her friend Nurse Rook attends to Mrs. Wallace and gets all the dirt from the Wallace house. In the book, Anne complains to Mrs. Smith that you can't trust secondhand gossip like that. But looking at it here, laid out on paper, it's a pretty solid loop. Anyway, now Mr. Elliot does want the title and the prestige that he will inherit. So when he finds out that Mrs. Clay is in the house and scheming and trying to become Miss Sir Walter's wife, and if she succeeds, she might have an heir who would oust him, he takes pains to get back on good terms with Sir Walter and Elizabeth. It seems that he really does love Anne as much as he can love anybody, but once Anne finds out about his true nature, she is not interested. We are now hastening to our happy end. Captain Wet realizes Anne is not in love with Mr. Elliot and works up the courage he proposes to her in a pretty epic letter. Captain Wentworth has earned lots of prestige and wealth in his career at sea, so nobody objects to the match. Even Lady Russell comes around eventually. Henrietta marries Charles Hayter. Louisa marries Captain Bennock. Mr. Elliot quits the scene, and Mrs. Clay follows him. Apparently she fell for him, and he was determined to get her claws out of Sir Walter, but Jane Austen speculates that perhaps one day Mrs. Clay may be able to wheedle Mr. Elliot into marrying her so she'll become Sir William instead of Sir Walter. Who knows? Well, there we have it. We've charted our way through Persuasion. This is such a wonderful book. Obviously, we've just sketched out the bare bones. You definitely need to go and read it for yourself to appreciate Jane Austen's brilliant writing and amazing characterization, but I just love the way all of her characters are woven together. As you can see, there are lots of connections. As I mentioned, I have some other Jane Austen character map videos if you'd like to check those out. If you're not yet, make sure you're subscribed. I post new videos every week. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Have you read Persuasion? Is it on your list? Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a magical and a bookish day. Bye guys.